around 245 or 250, which is what he usually is at, Jeremy. Well, we're about to find out exactly how much David Tu and Lennox Lewis weigh. Let's send it down now to the stage and our ring announcer, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino of Las Vegas, it's time for the official weigh-in. Stepping up to the scales first, the number one ranked challenger in the world. His record, 37 victories, including 32 KOs, one disputed decision loss from Auckland, New Zealand, to Amon, David Tua. 245 pounds for the challenger, David Tua. And now, ladies and gentlemen, stepping up to the scales, the universally recognized, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, the pride of Great Britain, Lennox Lewis. 249 pounds for the champion. All right, Al, what have you gleaned about these fighters and this fight from this weigh-in? Well, you know, as we take a look at these uh, two fighters, the weights that they came in at, the 249 for uh, Lewis is normal, the 245 for uh, Tua Man Tua is, of course, represents continued move upwards for him as we've seen in recent fights. So we're going to have a chance to ask him about that in a moment or two. The 245 is still heavy for him, but we'll see if that affects him in this bout. All right, Al, thank you very much. In a moment, we will have for you the tale of the tape, but we know already the age disparity between these men is eight years. The weight disparity, well, we know not very big. The height disparity, seven inches officially, probably an inch more in reality. And the reach disparity, an enormous 15 inches. All right, for our viewers watching now on SportsCenter, we'll hear later in the show from Lennox Lewis and from David Tua. But for now, let's send it back to the studio in Bristol. Jeremy, thank you. Some baseball notes. Stan is the new world heavyweight champion. Only one man can win, but who will it be? It's Lennox Lewis against David Tua. The Royal Rampage is about to begin for the World Heavyweight Championship. Hello again, everyone. I'm Bob Papa. The Royal Rampage is set for the World Heavyweight Championship as Lennox Lewis defends his throne against David Tua. Over the next 30 minutes, we will get you... I always say to people, it's like trying to reach the top of the hill. And in order to get there, you have to go through some curves, some hills, even drop in some potholes. But when you finally reach it, you know, it's, it's worth the trip. That road to the top began in October of 1992. Despite an undefeated record of 21-0 with 18 knockouts, Lewis entered the ring as the underdog in front of an enthusiastic hometown London crowd. Lennox met what was to be his toughest challenge to date in Donovan Razor Ruddick. In round one, Lennox crushed Ruddick with a devastating right hand. And in round number two, he would end Ruddick's night. The muscular six foot five Englishman was turning heads and serving notice of future stardom, displaying a sensational combination of boxing ability and pure power. In 1993, when Riddick Bowe, who had defeated Evander Holyfield to win the undisputed heavyweight championship, chose not to fight Lewis, Bowe was stripped of the WBC crown. It was awarded to Lennox Lewis. In September of 94, he lost his title when Oliver McCall, the number one contender, sent a smashing right hand to Lewis's temple in the second round. Lennox rose to his feet. He was not allowed to continue as the referee called a halt to the bout. Many felt it was a wrong call and that Lennox should have been allowed to continue. The heavyweight crown was no longer his, but he vowed to regain it. Over the two-year period of 95 and 96, Lennox fought four times. He won all four. Amongst his victories was a smashing sixth-round destruction of Tommy Morrison and a fierce ten-round unanimous decision over a stubborn Ray Mercer that severely tested Lewis's mettle and heart. 
1997, with the WBC title now vacant, Lewis regained his long sought after heavyweight belt, as well as a measure of revenge by pummeling Oliver McCall. Lennox Lewis was champion again. Later that year, after disposing of Henry Akinwande, he put on his finest and most impressive performance to date. Andrew Galata was regarded by many as a potential threat to Lewis's title, but Lennox ended all discussion early. He annihilated the challenger with a series of savage right hands, ending Galata's night in the first round. In March of 98, Lewis and Shannon Briggs staged one of the year's best heavyweight fights. Lewis was rocked and hurt in the first round, battered again in the third. But Lewis put his boxing talent into full gear. His crunching right floored Biggs four times and wrapped to an incredible, exciting fifth round stoppage. Despite possessing the WBC belt, Lewis was not satisfied. He coveted another title, that of undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. March 13, 1999, New York's Madison Square Garden. After seemingly battering Evander Holyfield over 12 rounds, many thought that the designation was now finally Lennox's. But it was not to be. A shocked arena, a bewildered global audience, and a stunned Lewis could not believe this fight ended in a draw. Exactly eight months later in Las Vegas, Lewis met Holyfield in the rematch with the undisputed heavyweight crown on the line again. This time, Lewis left no doubt with the judges as to who was the better man. He put on a stirring display of boxing, hitting Holyfield with his jab almost at will. The more than 6,000 British supporters exploded in joy as this time their man heard the words that they and he so desperately wanted to hear. For the first time in more than a century, a British fighter was now the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. As the new millennium began, the first defense of Lewis's heavyweight crown was of gigantic proportions. Standing six foot seven, Michael Grant ranked as the number one challenger. Lennox remembers. My recollections for the Grant fight is the fact that we're both two big heavyweights in a 20 by 20 foot ring. And whoever commands the center of the ring controls the fight. Uh, I never really expected him to come at me like that. It's like two bulls coming at each other. But when I realized that uh, he was just set on coming at me, you know, I just switched and start getting uh, fluid with my motion and just showed him the sweet science of the sport. It took only two rounds for one giant to slay another. And now any remaining critics of the heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis were silenced as he had answered another challenger, not with his words, but with pulverizing punches. In his last fight, Lewis came back to his native London for the first time since his Oliver McCall loss. Now almost six years later, he gave his fellow countrymen and Francois both of South Africa a night to remember. You know, in the Francois both of fight, I realized that, you know, he was coming to my body. But when he tried to come to my body, I hit him with a jab that he's never seen before. And I seen that crimple on his face. And then I realized, okay, you know, now I have you. And I went out there and just, did what comes naturally and, and took him out. That night, Lewis created a masterpiece on a different kind of canvas with an artistic ending to a fight as had been seen in a long time. The three punch combination was a natural punch to me. It just came out automatically. He did something and I just threw the combination and he ended up right in a great position for my right hand. So I threw the right hand and I could feel the crushing blow of, of the punch and as I seen his body just turn and fly through the ropes, I realized I landed a great right hand. So now another number one challenger looms ahead. One who promises to do the Lennox what others could not, to throne the king. But the man who knows this proud champion the best feels Lennox will maintain his royal status for a long time. You still have not saw the best of Lennox Lewis. I believe in the next year or so, if he continues the fight, you will see a tremendously talented heavyweight maybe the most talented heavyweight that we've ever had in the history of boxing. As Lennox Lewis sharpens his jab, David Tua is also experiencing the pain of training camp. How will the Royal Rampage be fought? When we return, we'll take an inside look. He's king of the ring, heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. But if you think it's easy to wear this crown, think again. David Tua has his eye on the prize.
I am the warrior. The number one contender has a warrior's power, ferocious fists, and the best knockout record of any fighter Lewis has ever faced. Nobody takes my crown. Nobody. It's my destiny. You want it? Come and get it. Lewis versus Tua. Royal Rampage for the heavyweight championship of the world, Saturday, November 11th, live on pay-per-view. Don't miss the colossal battle of the two toughest heavyweights in the division, Royal Rampage. Contact your pay-per-view provider to order. To order. Can the crown survive the fury? On the night of November 11th, Lennox Lewis will be superior and will be the victor. On the night of November 11th, a new heavyweight champion of the world, David Tua. After the fight is over, there can only be one winner, but who? Check it out live on pay-per-view. The Royal Rampage for the World Heavyweight Championship. Lennox Lewis versus David Tua. Saturday, November the 11th. Contact your local pay-per-view provider. Well, the Royal Rampage sets up as an intriguing matchup between Lennox Lewis and David Tua. Two contrasting styles. Let's take a look at the strategy as we visit both camps, starting with Emmanuel Stewart, who knows there will not be a power outage. The thing that concerns me the most about the fight with David Tua is David's tremendous punching power. He punches very good early in a fight, and unlike a lot of other fighters, he punches very good late in the fight. His ability to knock a man out in the first round or the 12th round. David Tua has uncommon power. Power that you do not see come along very often. And that's why it doesn't matter if he's behind on points in a 12 round fight, he's got 36 minutes. And believe me, in 36 minutes is a long time and he's gonna land that left hook, he's gonna land the left uppercut, he's gonna land the right hand. He has a tremendous chin, even though Lennox may hit him earlier, it's going to be interesting because I think his ability to take a punch means that he's going to get through and still land a fair amount of blows on his own. Lennox Lewis has never ever felt the power that he is going to feel on the 11th of November. He has never fought a fighter with the power of a David Tua. Both Lennox Lewis and David Tua have won 37 fights. Lewis has recorded 29 knockouts. Tua has 32. Although Lewis has one of heavyweight's best jabs, it's his explosive right hand that does the damage. I don't believe anybody can stand up to my right hand. When I throw my right hand, it comes off naturally. I just throw it and people just react off of it. All of a sudden, they crumble from it. And I'm not aware of how hard I throw it. I just throw it and make sure that it reaches its target. For Tua, his left hook is considered the best in boxing today. That one punch has chopped down most of his foes. When I throw that left hook, and when that left hook finds home, it sends fear, I taste blood, and I taste victory. When Davy says he uh, goes out there and senses fear in his opponents, he hasn't had an opponent like Lennox Lewis. You know, I don't get scared in there. It's not easy to hit me with a left hook. So even when he's trying to hit me with a left hook, he's gonna be eating my jabs. So we're going to see how he responds to that. What appears certain is that the fighter's height and reach will play a pivotal role in the outcome. The 5'10 challenger simply must find a way to get to the 6'5 champion. The game plan for the fight against David Tour is for Lennox to stay busy, to continually work his jab, different variety of jabs, not a simple, just straight jab and to look for openings and to systematically figure out which is the best punch to land on tour. I believe that if Lennox fights David Tour and keeps the fight in a certain zone where David is not effective and he has to lunge in order to punch, Lennox will knock him out within three rounds. Well, obviously our plan for the fight is not to stay on the outside. If we stay on the outside against a fighter like Lewis with huge reach and height advantage, we can't win, and we're going to be in for a very, very hard time. We have to fight him at close quarters, and that's where the fight will take place. We're going to make Lennox Lewis fight. We want to get Lennox Lewis into a, into a uh, stand-up punch-up, where they're trading, trading blows together. We want him to trade punches with David Tua. I know that I'm going to be well prepared for this fight. 
to be adjusted to uh, the style of Lennox Lewis. Uh, a longer reach with height, and he's very strong as well. So I'm gonna cover all my bases. I'm gonna uh, make sure that, that all the angles are being covered and taken care of. But regardless of all this, you would still have to go out and fight. I expect David too to come at me, come at my body, trying to get inside because that's his, that's his only advantage point to get inside of me. But he's gonna try that with Noville. I realize the boxes that he's been boxing have been guys that he's gone after and he's been, been able to knock them out in the first round. All of a sudden, if he comes after me like that, he's gonna find it very difficult because he's never seen a boxer like me. And I'm the best there is out there. Nice. The Royal Rampage will soon take place in the ring, but first Lennox Lewis and David Tua had to display another side of their talents, acting. When we come back, we'll take a look at the making of Royal Rampage. He's king of the ring, heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. But if you think it's easy to wear this crown, think again. David Tua has his eye on the prize. I am the warrior. The number one contender has a warrior's power, ferocious fists, and the best knockout record of any fighter Lewis has ever faced. Nobody takes my crown. Nobody. It's my destiny. You want it? Come and get it. Lewis versus Tua. Royal Rampage. For the heavyweight championship of the world. Saturday, November on pay-per-view. Don't miss the colossal battle of the two toughest heavyweights in the division, Royal Rampage. Contact your pay-per-view provider to order. Can the crown survive the fury? The making of the Royal Rampage commercial brought Lennox Lewis and David Tua into a New York City film studio. I love New York. It's a big city. Uh, it's definitely the place not to get lost in. The theme's intent was to compare the regal royal heavyweight Lewis protecting his royal crown against the rage of David Tua, the Samoan warrior who's looking to capture it for himself. If, if David stays just right here, we can move around. I want to like, kind of have him warmed up like he's, you know, kind of getting psyching himself up for battle and for war. Great. Roll sound. Speed. For David Tua, this was his first pay-per-view commercial shoot. In this scene, he's preparing to give a Samoan war call. He's a heavyweight hero, got compassion and pride. Courage and commitment. He's uh, got a lot of uh, many hidden talents, and this is one of them, you know. Consider myself as a one take man. As we've seen, Tua is a fierce warrior in the ring, but on the set, he was in all his Samoan glory, showing his bulging calves to the crew. My God, is that a bowling ball in there? As the heavyweight champ, he's done these commercials before, although each major pay-per-view fight has had a different theme and a different acting requirement. But just like in the ring, Lennox is a master at this craft, too. But as of now, he'll leave the acting to the pros. Acting's hard. People may think it's easy, but you know, to wait around all day, and to uh, become somebody else that you're not is difficult. I find it very difficult, so I'd rather be a boxer. Okay, he's not going to quit his day job for now, but in the end, Royal Rampage was shot and it was sensational. We've heard from both camps and both fighters about the showdown. Now it's time for the media's opinion. It is the best right hand in the last 20 years in the heavyweight division and the best left hand by Tua since Joe Frazier. So you've got two power punchers. So that could make a great, great fight. I think that Lennox Lewis, because he has a vast amount of experience, he has a great right hand, I give him an advantage in this fight. But David Tua is a fighter that keeps coming forward. And, he, and if he can work, and, and he's willing to work hard to get inside, he can make this a very, very difficult fight for Lennox. And if Lennox can't keep David Tua outside, then David Tua wins this fight. Two is a pure puncher, and there's always going to be room in the heavyweight division for pure punchers. Now he's very small, five foot ten. He's been fighting a little too heavy lately. If he comes down for Lewis, we'll presume he's in good shape. But overcoming that size is going to be the big problem. He will always have a puncher's chance. 
And he does one thing better than most punchers, especially heavyweight punchers. He carries his power into the later rounds, as he's proven many times. And that's a real threat for Lennox Lewis. I look for Lennox Lewis winning a 12-round decision. But Lennox Lewis has had trouble with stamina during the course of his career. Lennox Lewis has had trouble with shorter fighters. Lennox Lewis is vulnerable to the left hook. And David Tua has all those things. So this is one of those fights where you can't turn away for a moment because boom, you know, at any moment, anything could happen. Power, determination, skill. It exemplifies both Lennox Lewis and David Tua. And they will match those qualities live on pay-per-view for the World Heavyweight Championship. It's the Royal Rampage, Saturday, November the 11th. Contact your local pay-per-view provider. Lennox Lewis and David Tua will square off in what should be an epic battle between two great warriors. We hope you've enjoyed the show. For our entire crew, I'm Bob Papa, and enjoy the Royal Rampage. Hey, man, just spit it right in there. Don't worry about it. Up your hands, be sharp, change your angles. Give him that, hey, hey, come on. And snap your punch. So you saw the copy.